Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the last day of our ecosystem stage at Coalesce. Um, yeah, I hope you've had a great conference so far and looking forward to some great content today. Uh, my name is Amy Diora, and I head up Partnerships and Alliances for DBT Labs. So super excited to welcome kind of one of our great partners to the stage, Sisu. So today we have Gar Gaurav Saraf, head of product at Sisu Data. He's going to give us a presentation on building a relevance engine with DBT and ML AI. So super excited to, to have, him, have him here today. Um, one of the things I wanted to remind you, again, y'all uh, should know the drill by now, um, all of the conversation can be found in um, DBT Slack. It's never too late to join DBT Slack. So if you haven't joined yet and you're joining us from online, um, please go ahead and join Slack now. If you're looking for the channel, it's Coalesce, Building a Relevance Engine. So that's where we'll have the conversation in DBT Slack. And of course, um, Gaurav and some other folks from Sisu will be in the channel and can answer any of your questions there, both during the presentation and after. So I'll go ahead and um, hand it off to Gaurav. And yeah, thanks so much. Thank you, Amy. I think I have this one, so I'll turn this one off. All right, thank you, Amy. Thank you so much. I'm very excited to be here today. Thanks, everybody in the room and also uh, online watching us today or perhaps sometime in the future. Uh, so again, my name is uh, Gaurav Saraf. I am the head of product at Sisu Data. And today we'll be talking about how to build a relevance engine uh, using both DBT as well as AI ML techniques. And yes, obviously, Sisu is the part that brings in the AI ML over here. Uh, just to give you a quick idea of what I'm going to cover, first is what is the macro problem we're trying to solve here? I'm going to walk you through what that is. I'm a product manager, so I keep talking about what's the problem statement before we get into the next steps. After that, I'll tell you what is Sisu. Uh, and what, what problem, how does it solve that macro problem? After that, I'll tell you how does Sisu work with DBT and how you can use DBT and Sisu to create a relevance engine and analyze your business metrics or even do some things with your data pipelines. Okay, so let's get going. Clicker works. So what's the, what's the really big problem that you know, customers are facing today? Uh, Gartner puts this really well, so I'm gonna read from them first and then kind of uh, unpack this. The problem is that the volume and velocity of data and increased complexities, uh, and increased complexities in decision making have become too much for a human being to handle without assistance. So let's, let's unpack that, there's a lot of words. So number one, with, with all the data moving to cloud, yes, there's way too much volume, right? And when we say volume, it's just not like the number of rows, so hundreds of millions of rows, but it can also be the number of dimensions, right? So you used to live in a world where there may be three, four, five dimensions today, 50, 100, 200, maybe 500, 1,000, who knows? There's a lot of dimensions. And when that's happening and changing at speed, it's very hard to go figure out what's going on, whether it's your pipelines or your business metrics. And it just makes it very hard for human beings to say, great, I'm just gonna have a pivot table with a couple dimensions to go figure this out, or one SQL statement to go figure this out. You need some other tool to help you with this complexity and help you make decisions. And so, in a world where you don't have more machine-based technologies, it's very hard to do this in making decisions, whether, again, it's for your pipelines or your business metrics. So how does Sisu solve for this, and really, what is Sisu? Uh, so Sisu is a decision intelligence engine. And what that means is that we help you look at all of this data. We have AI and ML under the hood that helps you figure out what's happening to your metrics and help you analyze them, or what's happening inside your data sets and figure that out. Let's, let's unpack that a little bit. So let's take business metrics first. Right? You've got business metrics like revenue, churn, retention, whatever that is. And they come with really large data sets, typically. They can be hundreds of millions of rows, billions of rows sometimes, and many, many dimensions. What Sisu does is we can take that data set, once you've defined the metric, obviously, and really unpack what's going on inside a metric. The way we think about this in, in business is typically what is happening to my metric, kind of historically. Why are there changes happening to my business metrics after that? So that's the step in the middle. And then lastly, what might happen to my metric after that? Now, these are all you know, words that might be somewhat familiar. So trend detection, anomaly detection are things that are like, what's happening in my business in the past? When there is a trend change detected, why did that happen? So you can do a key job analysis and see, so you can do a time comparison, a group comparison. And lastly, you might say, okay, fine, now that I know what happened to revenue in the past, what happened to traffic in the past, what happened to churn in the past, what does this mean going forward? Now, the beauty of this is that we're not doing this again with just one or two dimensions at a time, right? What CISU does is we take the entire data set that uh, a user might throw at us and says, okay, fine, uh, we're not gonna look at this one or two dimensions at a time, we're gonna look at all the possible dimensions in your data set 
analyze all the possible factors. So if you've got a column, let's say like, I don't know, product category, there could be 10, 10, 10 uh, cardinal values over there, it could be 10 distinct values. You have another column for, let's say, customer demographics, that could be more options over there. And when you start doing the permutations, these can easily be you know, in the millions of permutations that might explain what's happening in their metric. Now, if you've got a tool like pivot tables or Excel or simple charts, you cannot create all the charts to visualize those trends. It's physically impossible, right? And so what CISO does, it says, great, throw us all this data. We look at all these possible factors across all the dimensions, across all the factors, and not just like, let's say, um, I'm gonna say category equals furniture. That's like one factor, but also the, all the two and three order combinations that are possible in a data set, right? So it could be category equals furniture and customers from Massachusetts and the user's coupon code. Like, is that driving a trend or not? And so we can look at all of these permutations and do analyses like trend detection, anomaly detection, uh, predictions, forecast, time comparison on them. The beauty of this is that, you know, typically when I thought about this myself, I was like, oh, that must take hours and hours to go run. Large data sets, so many billions of permutations. Uh, what CSU has invented is that we can do this in seconds, right? So you can point CSU to these data sets, and we'll run this algorithm that runs all these permutations and finds out what the statistical drivers of your metrics are and present them to you in a UI, by the way, within, within seconds. And that's, that's really the unlock that CSU is driving over here in being a decision intelligence engine, helping you make a uh, sense of what's going on with your metrics behind the scenes. So uh, how does this work kind of in a more technical way? So we have uh, CISO sits on top of your cloud data warehouse, so Snowflake, BigQuery, Databricks. Uh, if it's a cloud data warehouse, we probably support it. And you point CISO to those tables in those data sets. You can then define the metrics in CISO if you need, or if you have a semantic layer, and obviously I'll be talking about this in the next slide. If you have a semantic layer like DBTs, then we also integrate with DBT. Uh, in order to pull that information from DBT. Now, after you have that done, you can then, in a no-code way, uh, do all these steps of analyses and help you not only get insights about those metrics, but also drive towards making decisions. Um, so in the end, this allows you to consume insights and take action in any workflow. Again, you can do this in the UI, but we also have integrations with other third-party products, as well as uh, through APIs as well. So just to give you some examples of uh, how our customers have been using CSU in this. So what are some sample metrics and what are those use cases? So revenue optimization is a big one. We have customers like Samsung and Upwork doing this. Uh, what is revenue optimization? You have metrics like, uh, obviously, revenue. Uh, MRR stands for monthly recurring revenue, average auto value, lifetime value, customer lifetime value, and retention. Right. So if you're trying to figure out from a business point of view what will optimize by revenue, you can run those types of analyses on these metrics and then go figure out, great, what are the drivers of these metrics historically, trends and anomalies? Uh, why was there a trend change? Why did the change happen week over week? Why is there a difference from last week to this week? Sorry, last year to this year. Uh, you can also do group comparisons where you can say, hey, I see revenue is going up in Canada, but not in the US. So that's a group comparison to say, wh why is there a difference? What's, what's causing this difference between these two countries, these two states? Uh, these two tests that I ran, anything that is. Uh, second example is customer journey optimization. So this is, uh, think about a PLG motion, where you've got a metric like cost of customer acquisition, CAC, very popular. Uh, what is the conversion of going from kind of visiting the website to actually acquiring the customer? Uh, daily active users, CSAT is for customer satisfaction scores, as well as churn, if the customer is about to churn, what's going on? And so we have customers like Gusto, Rowe, and Fractory, who basically look at these metrics in CSU on a daily and weekly basis to help them optimize how can we increase uh, conversion? How can we decrease cost of customer acquisition? How can we decrease churn? What are those drivers? What are those really those key segments in my data sets that will drive improvements in my metric? And the last one I'll, I'll mention, a very popular one over here, is about incidence reduction. So this is when something bad happens, uh, you want to also kind of reduce those things. So fraud rate. Uh, which can happen in financial situations, but also e-commerce. Uh, damage rate, so this is more supply chain related, or return rate, which is, again, more e-commerce related. So if you've got customers like Wayfair and Overstock, uh, who typically uh, use CSU to understand these metrics at scale. So here's a, so this should cover high level, this is my clicker work, there you go. So this covers high level what, what CSU is about, how our customers are using CSU, 
uh, to analyze these metrics at scale using kind of ANML under the hood without them, by the way, knowing the, the algorithms of the Python necessarily. Uh, how does this work with DBT, though? So we recently integrated with DBT metrics, and what that means is that instead of having to define all those metrics I just told you about inside Sisu, you can now have all, that, all your data models inside DBT instead, define those metrics in DBT, and when you come to Sisu, you connect to uh, DBT just like a normal data source, like you would connect to Snowflake, you would connect to DBT instead, and you'd get the list of metrics that you define inside DBT automatically inside Sisu. So this is really, really useful because if you define this metric centrally, you're probably using them across multiple uh, data products, whether it is your BI tool or a tool like Sisu or perhaps notebooks, whatever that is, you can go define these metrics centrally and then use them in a well-governed fashion across all these tools. Uh, Sisu will also allow you to have, uh, kind of support the DBT SQL dialect. And so if you, if you want to run SQL inside uh, Sisu directly using the DBT backend, no problem, you can do it as well. So that's very good if you want to do some special explorations or define your metrics kind of initially in CISO as a trial mode, uh, no problem, you can do that as well. Uh, this really helps in the end uh, to reduce the work that you have to do uh, across multiple products. So uh, just more tactically, what does this look like if you're trying to implement this and what do the flow of data and metrics and insights look like? So over here you've got your cloud data warehouse, right? Uh, Snowflake, Databricks, um, everybody else. And obviously before this, you've got your, your applications or your third-party SaaS application that are generating this data. You've got uh, ELT tools that move the data from those applications into, into a data warehouse. After that, you would connect DBT to that cloud data warehouse and start building your metrics and models inside the DBT layer. Then you can come to Sisu and say, great, I want to connect to DBT directly so that all these metrics are now pulled in from DBT to Sisu, and you can start analyzing those metrics and data sets in Sisu directly. Now, when you start doing these types of analyses, so again, uh, what happened to my metrics, the why analyses, what's next, predictions, forecasts, et cetera, when you get these insights, you can do one of two things now. One is if it's a business metric, obviously you can directly see the results in the product, and you can take that to your next stakeholder, you can export it out, you can integrate with the next layer. Uh, but you can also start syncing this back now with both the Cloud Data Warehouse. You can kind of move data directly from CISO to Cloud Data Warehouse or with DBT to find out what are those relevant factors, what are those relevant dimensions that I might want to do more, more, more modeling with on DBT. Right? So it's kind of up to you if you're trying to do relevance for your business metrics or relevance for your data pipeline. Right? There's two different use cases there. Um, and we've got the necessary APIs to kind of connect you this way or this way. If you're not interested in APIs, obviously you can do that all in the UI as well. Kind of up to you. So what does this mean for, uh, you know, I talked a little bit about the business metrics on revenue and churn, things like that. But what does it really mean for your pipeline? And yes, I'm not talking about your sales pipeline, but your data pipelines here. Uh, so typically if you've got a lot of data, uh, I'm gonna go back one slide. Yeah, if you've got a lot of data coming over here and you're modeling things in DBT, uh, that can be a, you know, easy if it's a few dimensions, but if you've got hundreds, 200 dimensions, and how do you know which ones uh, to kind of apply tests for, how, how to know which ones to include versus not in your downstream systems? So what you can do is that in Sisu, instead of having to do this all manually uh, with like not enough resources or not enough time to figure it out, what you can do is you can pipe all that data to Sisu and automate, hey, which dimensions are relevant in, even in understanding these metrics, right? And if, that, if those dimensions are relevant, let's say that you've got 500 dimensions inside your data set, like, I don't want to go model all of them. Uh, I don't want to go figure out test for all of them or uh, you know, transform all of them. Throw them into CSU, determine, helps, you know, let CSU help you figure out which dimensions or which factors are relevant. And that might give you a signal to say, okay, fine, these of these 500, these are 50 or 60 that really matter, so I'm going to implement them really well inside DPD. And so CISO initially started with like trying to solve for, hey, what happens after your, your data set is ready? And you can go do relevance on your metrics, but you can also take that full loop, go one step back and say, okay, fine, uh, how do I actually automate this thing uh, even on the data pipeline side? So one last slide here, and then I'll, I'll take questions in a second. So in the end, just to wrap things up, uh, you can use CISO for relevance in multiple ways. Uh, we have ANML under the hood. You don't need to know the algorithms, uh, but we have them implemented on our side, and you can basically identify relevance, whether it's for your business metrics or relevant columns for data prep 
uh, for ML ops or any other use case you have downstream from the DBT layer. Uh, we help you enumerate which dimensions are relevant, which features are relevant, not just at the you know, single column value pair, but also all the doubles and triple combinations that are possible inside your data set. That's super powerful. Uh, we do this extremely fast, so this is not gonna take days and hours and years to go run. You can click a button, you'll get a result in 30, 60, 90 seconds, kind of slightly depending on the size of the data. And in the end, uh, you'll get the results ranked by impact or relevance, which are, which are was kind of heuristic that's most interesting to you to identify these are relevant factors. Impact can be, hey, what's the impact of the metric? What's the impact of the factor on the metric in a week-over-week -week comparison? Or it can be, uh, how, how correlated is this dimension with my metric? Identify the confidence of correlation, and then say, great, I'm gonna take the most correlated metrics, sorry, the most correlated dimensions or the highest confident factors and use that for my downstream analyses. Uh, you can then materialize all of this, kind of depending on where you want, either in back to your cloud data warehouse, so CISO can pump the insights directly back to Snowflake, Databricks, wherever you want, or you can sync these with DPT in order to kind of add more data models on top of these, these new insights. And, and lastly, you can use, again, APIs for any repeatability, right? You can use a UI to like do the initial setup if you need, and then you can use APIs at the end uh, to kind of automate it for scale, whether it's, again, for your pipelines or downstream metrics. So I hope I've given you a sense of how uh, Sisu is thinking about uh, building a relevance engine with both DBT as well as ANML uh, together. Uh, Sisu is trying to build this out for you know, all types of use cases. We have tons of customers already using it for business metrics. They've started exploring it with DBT as well as for uh, data pipelines and data engineering as well. So I'll pause there, those are all my slides. Uh, I'll take any questions from the crowd uh, or even on Slack later on. Sorry. Anyone have any questions for Gaurav? Uh, what's the importance of having your metrics in a semantic layer with, with something like DBT? Um, what does that mean for an organization, and like, why would I set that up? Yeah, that's a great question. So it's mostly because if, if you have that defined at the DBT or some semantic layer, right? DBT is obviously leading this right now, but if you have that defined in one place, you don't have to go rework that in the next tool downstream. But you can also control uh, not just making sure that it's the same logic across all the tools, but also that as things change, which unfortunately I think data sets change, metric definitions change sometimes, that change is managed really well at the DBD side and the layer where your uh, data analysts or product managers, marketing managers are consuming these insights from tools like Sisu, uh, they're kind of, they don't have to bother about, gosh, is my data in sync, is this the right definition, uh, things like that. So it's, it just makes life way easier if you're a data analyst or a product manager, or even a data engineer. Anyone else have any questions? Okay, cool. Any, All right. uh, yeah. any final comments? No, thank you so much for coming, everybody. Really, really excited to see where this uh, CISO and DPD partnership goes. We have a bunch of customers uh, trying out the product already. If you're, by the way, interested to learn more about CISO, you can visit our website, uh, cisudata.com. If you want to get hands on keyboard, uh, just you know, hit the contact us button. You can also talk to me today, by the way, and I'll show you the demo. Uh, we can set up a Zoom call later on uh, to show CISU to you. And uh, yeah, I think that's it.